Hi all, good morning. So my name is Praveen Tarthik Arumugam and I'm going to walk you through uh, my next machine learning model uh, that I have uh, developed to predict the lung cancer. Uh, and this is a problem type of uh, binary classification. And this is my LinkedIn and this is my GitHub portfolio and my uh, all my uh, projects will be available in this GitHub portfolio. And uh, this can be, uh, you can go on very well, check out in this particular folder in the GitHub. I have already uploaded the uh, PowerPoint presentation and my uh, Jupyter notebook here and also the test data. So yeah, let me get into the slide. So the problem statement is to identify whether a person has uh, lung cancer or not. Basically it's a binary classification so it has two classes. One is yes or no and they are categorical variables. So so data is collected from Kaggle.com and uh, this is the URL for the lung cancer test data. And I have done an exploratory uh, data analysis and I've done uh, feature engineering uh, to ensure the categorical values are uh, converted into numerical values in order to predict the uh, cancer. So then I have uh, gone into the model development wherein I have done uh, splitting the data set, the given data set into a training and the testing uh, data set. Then I have done some feature selection wherein uh, now we have to select some uh, uh, the most uh, relevant features that are uh, correlated uh, towards uh, the target variable that is lung cancer prediction. But in this data set, um, as the data set is very, very less, the number of rows are very, very less. I have not uh, filtered out any of the features. I have included everything. I'll tell you the reason when I go through the Jupyter uh, notebook. Model selection and I've used models like logistic regression and also uh, some of the other models uh, from the bagging and the boosting techniques like uh, the decision uh, tree and the random forest as part of bagging and uh, add a boost and gradient boost as part of the boosting techniques and i'll show you a comparison of the models and their accuracy levels in the upcoming slides and also in the jupyter notebook and this is the model performance metrics if you can see that the column has all the different models that i have used i have tested i've trained the data with and i've tested it against the test data and these are on the left hand side that these are the different metrics that I've used to measure the accuracy. So if you can see out of all these, uh, the ADA boost classifier is the one which is 100% accurate when we uh, do a performance matrix called recall score. And uh, similarly, ADA boost classifier is topping the uh, score list across all other uh, metrics and all other models. So I'll, I'll show this in the Jupyter notebook as well. And what I've done, uh, the next step is I've uh, taken, uh, I've taken a mean of, I've, I've put in, uh, put all this uh, accuracy scores and the models across models into a data frame and I've taken a mean of it so that I'll ensure still my Adaboost classifier is stopping the list. And if you can see the mean of it, the logistic regression is 0 0.98 and decision is 0.97 and 98 is random forest and uh, gradient is 0 0.97 and still Ada boost classifier is 0.989. If you round it to uh, round up, round it off, it will be 0.99. Still, Ada boost classifier is the uh, right model for this particular data set. And the same thing, the uh, models versus scores I have plotted in the uh, line graph, and also I have plotted it in the bar graph. If you can see this, the red color is the Ada boost classifier, and that is stopping the list and uh, the next one is the random forest classifier. That is the second one, which is uh, giving you more accuracy next to Adaboost classifier. And this is the same way here. If you can see the red bars are uh, Adaboost classifier, and this is the one which is stopping the list. And if you can see the, uh, uh, the other models are pretty much closer. If you see a precision uh, score for, uh, uh, for all the models are pretty much same. So let me, uh, so this is my uh, LinkedIn and uh, this is my GitHub portfolio. You can always download my uh, portfolio from my GitHub uh, location. And let me get into the Jupyter notebook. So what I've done here is again, I have taken, I've given the comments uh, for each and as much as possible. And uh, this is the uh, place where I have uh, collected the data. So as part of the ML SDLC, uh, the first phase is data collection and I've uh, done the data. Uh, I've read the data, which is in the CSV file. And this is the uh, CSV, this is how the CSV file looks like. It has gender and it has the target variable lung cancer in categories. Okay, I mean, it has two uh, binary classes, yes 
and no and so hence this is a binary classification problem statement otherwise all other uh, features are in numerical values then i have done the exploratory data analysis understanding trying to understand the data that is present in the data set and I have the shape is we have 309 rows and 16 columns and I have tested here for the uh, any null values or NAND values NAN values across all the features then I have done the feature engineering as part of the EDA exploratory data analysis and this is a subsection of the EDA and this is where I've done some feature analysis feature engineering what does it means is that the, we have two categorical variables one is the gender which is in uh, m or f and the other one is lung cancer this is the target variable which is in yes or no so i have to convert this into numerical values in order to train and test my model so what i've done is i've used a label encoder and then i've created a new columns gender new and then lung cancer new and then dropped off the actual gender and lung cancer uh, which has a categorical values. See if you see gender new, I have converted into ones and zeros. One is male and zero is female. And uh, uh, lung cancer also I have converted into binary values. And then I am dropping off this uh, particular lung cancer and the gender which has the categorical values, which does not help to predict the model, uh, which does not help for the model's efficiency. So this is what I am doing. I have dropped it. I have dropped it. So now this is my data set which is uh, where I have done the uh, feature engineering. Then as part of the next SDLC phase, we have uh, I've done the model development. So here I'm splitting the data set into training and testing set. And these are the shapes. This is the X train and the white X test and Y train and Y test. So then here comes the feature selection part of the SDLC. So what I've done is, I've basically used select k -Pest to uh, select the, uh, to give a ranking on the features and use uh, chi square for the uh, for selecting the features based on the statistical methods so i also have plotted it in a data frame so i'm also uh, sorted it using the n largest by the descending order which has whichever has the um, a very big uh, correlation score it will be in the top so allergy is the one and alcohol consumption consuming is second and swallowing difficulty and so on if we notice this particular data set the smoking which is in the least uh, correlated feature but by common sense and by uh, some knowledge on the cancer part we know that smoking would be the primary cause for any i mean the lung cancer primarily so what i have done is i have not removed this feature as part of the feature selection technique but i have all uh, i've included all the features because i have only 15 feature sets here and this smoking should be topping the list as far as my domain knowledge is concerned but then we have as per this data set this smoking is in the least uh, you know uh, correlated feature uh, this is this is due to uh, the number of rows that we have we have some hundred somewhere around 300 plus rows only and that is not uh, a very big data set hence if, if, uh, if we have thousands of tens of thousands of data sets i mean the data rows then this smoking feature would be taking priority and then have mapped the uh, same using a heat, heat map and this is where we can see uh, the correlation between the different features as we have 15 plus features we have to identify which features are really correlated well and they can contribute towards the target variable okay and i have uh, plotted this graph between a scale of minus one and uh, one plus one and this is how it is looking like and uh, i don't uh, want to uh, drop any features based on this particular heat map because we have only a very limited number of rows which is 300 plus but then uh, it, it doesn't give any significant uh, you know numbers to drop any features so i have not considered this heat map at all but then if in case of you no know, tens of thousands of data definitely heat map plays a great role in identifying in, in doing a feature selection and then getting on to the model selection what i've done is <coughs> i have uh, trained five different models logistic the regression decision tree random forest add post and gradient boost and i have looped in through and i have uh, made a fit of the uh, data set into all these models through a loop and then I have also uh, you know measured the uh, accuracy metrics using accuracy score, precision score, recall score, F1 score and F beta score and I have also uh, converted the score versus uh, the models in a data frame and this is how it is and uh, if you know the F1 score is a 
mean of precision and recall score okay and this is what we have already seen in the presentation which i have shown just before and also i have taken this is nothing but the uh, as you know the models was a score is a data frame i have taken i have described it and i have to ensure the mean of the uh, all the model scores are really topping and based on which uh, i am just verifying whether my adabus classifier is still the one which is the right model for this particular data set and it is and as you see i have already plotted it in the line and bar graph and that's it about this particular model uh, please post your uh, review comments thanks for your time